Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Different, and welcome to Different World. And for today's vlog, I'm going to be sharing with you all my audio interview I did last Friday, the 13th, doo -doo 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 -doo, with Mr. Robert J. Moore of the International Writers Association podcast. Ooh, try saying it five times fast. Um, I had a really good time talking with him about my upcoming book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. Uh, we talked about issues that uh, bring social awareness to society. Um, a lot of issues that are ta taboo, if you will, uh, in, including systemic racism and injustice. Um, but I'm very, very happy that we talked about it. And um, I'm here sharing it with you all right now. And it's my hope that with this uh, interview that you guys listen to, uh, first off, you go and buy the book, uh, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. It will be out the last week of August. So stay tuned for that. But in any case, enjoy the interview. And I hope you guys at the end towards make sure you guys leave a comment, you share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that's that. Here's the video. Enjoy. Hi, this is Richard Todd. You're listening to the International Writers Association Podcast with your host, Robert J. Moore. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the International Writers Association Podcast. I am your host, Robert J. Moore. If you want to know more about our organization, you can go to our website, internationalwritersassociation.com. If you want to know more about this show, you can email me, robert at morewriting.com. So today we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into it. We have a different kind of guest. And in fact, her name is Different. So Different, uh, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate your time coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for having me. Hello to everybody out there listening. Um, my name is Different, as you said, and I'm so happy to have, be on the show today. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we cross paths on um, Facebook. So mm -hmm. you and I, we really don't know each other well, which is great because I love finding out about people this way and some of the gifts that they're going to share with us. So mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background and everything? Sure, sure, sure. Well, I'm 30 years old. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm a graduate of Sam Houston State University. Um, before I started my business, um, I've overcome a lot just like any other body that's gone through trials and tribulations, I have a story to tell. And it goes a little something like this. Um, I overcame homelessness and foster care um, at a very young age. I ended up homeless around the age of 11 and with my mom and brother. And for three years, we literally lived from pillow to post, you know, staying in different places, you name it. We stayed there. And at the age of 14, I was secretly placed in foster care by one of my relatives. And for the first six months that I was placed there, <clears throat> nobody knew where I was. None of my family members knew where I was. And um, within that time frame, I had learned that if you aged out of foster care, the state of Texas would pay for, you know, a form of foster care's tuition fee waiver. So right then and there, a light bulb went off in my head at the age of 14. And I thought, let me combine my street smarts with my book smarts and, and, and to elevate my book smarts, excuse me. And then um, went from there. So I spent the next four years in foster care. And afterwards I ended up, you know, going to college and getting my degree. And and with that, in a nutshell, I ended up getting a, a BA in international business with two minors in business common economics. I also have my master's in entrepreneurship as well as I'm a Texas real estate um, agent. But before I was able to do that, um, I, I had to get myself together. You know, I had a lot of issues that came upon but my childhood trauma that overlapped into my adulthood. And um, that that I, it forced me to look at myself and forced me to face the ugly truth about myself. And that face that if I was meant for greatness, which I've always felt in myself that I was meant to do good things, uh, wherever just the way that I was brought up, um, chaos I was used to it it was normal to me so whenever you know something good would happen to me I felt that it was too good to be true so I would go ahead and you know sabotage it and mess it up and like I said it overlapped into my adulthood and to where I was squandering opportunities in my adulthood and so um, growing up in a community of you know the black community a lot of us you know are taught or trained to believe that you know we don't talk about our issues you know we don't go to therapy we don't, you know, go and tell our business. 
And so it took me, you know, finding the courage within myself to dismiss that, you know, that theory and, and, and go get help. So basically, you know, ended up in therapy. Um, and so within, I've been in therapy now and I'm still in therapy and, and, and proud of it and not ashamed to say that. And so anybody out there listening <clears throat> who's going through, you know, any type of depression or, you know, feeling any type of emotional distress, you know, I encourage you guys to seek help. And it's okay to not be okay. Um, and it will be okay. Um, so when I did that and speaking with my therapist, you know, he's become a great mentor to me. And over time, you know, him helping me and teaching me and showing me, you know, to turn a negative into a positive, it led to me writing a book that I now have coming out titled What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Um, but however, before that, I want to say how my business came about, Third Eye Entertainment LLC. It actually started on accident. Um, once I was finished with the book, um, I contacted a lawyer and she was like, I love the book. It's awesome. I think it's going to do great. But um, what's the name of your business? And I paused and I was like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> and so, you know, Mr. Ron, one thing about life is, you know, when you think you have, you know, something or you just not getting the hang of it, you know, life comes through and swoop, knock you off your high horse and reminds you that you don't know anything. And just, that's just a lesson to keep growing and keep learning and keep going and, and, and going, never stop learning. And so once I learned that, um, I formed my LLC and and as of March 2021, I had my company, Third Eye Entertainment, you know, a company that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services that educates, entertains, and inspires all at once. Um, <clears throat> we have a motto that we live by and we try to uh, um, send to the message to our audience that in order for those who want to achieve guaranteed success in life, they must first manifest and speak into existence what they believe in and what they want. Second, they must plan for everything that it is they want coming to them. Third, they must prepare for what is about to happen. And so our motto therefore is manifest, plan, and prepare. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the type of services and products that we provide is published in video material that uh, talks on um, subjects uh, that are pertinent in today's society such as issues as systemic racism, injustice. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You're good. I do apologize, Mr. Robert. <laughs> oh, no, it's all, it's all good. Um, it sounds like somebody won some money. Oh, I don't know what that was. My, my TV came on. I thought it was off. This was on a timer. I'm so sorry. That is so embarrassing. <laughs> but hey, that's life. This is just real me. You know, what you see is what you get. <laughs> I'm not a perfect person. So hey, let you know I'm human right off the bat. But uh, where was I? I'm so sorry. That scared me first off and then got me off track. <laughs> well, oh, you, you know, me see, let me look at my notes. Yes, my motto, uh, manifest, plan, prepare, uh, service and products. Uh, yes. So uh, I was saying about our services and products that we provide to society. It touches bases um, on, on certain issues that are considered taboo. Like I was saying, you know, it's, excuse me, injustice, systemic racism. We also talk about issues such as women's rights, gender's right, LGBTQ issues, um, things that, you know, people like to you know steer away from or don't like to acknowledge we bring that to light and we push for you know change and motivation for others to change as well for the better um, with that we have our first project uh, at hand my book what if a controversial paradigm shift uh, before I go any further with that I must state that this book is it does come with a disclaimer and it's intended for a mature audience only it does have sensitive content um, this book was written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustrations. It entails on controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within, within the African-American community. It is presented in the forms of three different categorized paradigm shifts. These categories are for our historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And within those four paradigms, there are sub paradigms that details, again, the controversial depths and events that have occurred over time. <clears throat> so for example, in our historical paradigm, we have a sub paradigm called thanks for all your help. 
And so within that paradigm, I'm asking the question such as, what if poor white people work for wealthy black families, whereas in a white housemaid nurse black babies and white male shoe shiners shine black male shoes all day, wherein they received racial hardship, no medical benefits, and were underpaid? So that's a question that I would ask in that um, historical paradigm or one of the sub paradigms. And what this book is, 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 is meant for the illustrations, it's meant to you know, push the envelope to stimulate those who don't like to have those conversations those about these heavy topics about systemic racism and what's going on right now in our time. Um, I know it's an ugly situation, a lot that, that makes people uncomfortable and cringe, but it's one of those conversations that need to be had and it's about time, mm -hmm. you know, they say, if not now, then when? And um, the reason, if you ask what, what made me want to write a book like this or how this book came about, there are several reasons. Um, one, you know, long time ago when I was 13 and going through what I was going through, I prayed and asked God to, you know, allow me to be the one in my family to break the generational curse and create generational wealth. And I also said that I was going to write a book about my personal life. But as I grew up, I, I realized it's not, this is not about me. It's, it's bigger. And so I wanted my first book to be a universal book that's not just about me, but one that can reach out to everybody else and touch others and help them change from within. Um, second, um, being from Houston and, and when the death of George Floyd happened, um, I'm, I grew up in the place that he's from. I'm from Fifth Ward, but I actually grew up in Third Ward as well. Um, and when he passed away, I definitely wanted to get involved in March and protest. I even wanted to attend his funeral. I planned on bringing my nephew so that he could be aware as well. However, when it all came down to it, I couldn't do it because I felt that I wanted my voice to stand longer than that moment in time. I wanted my voice to be heard even after I'm gone. So afterwards, you know, praying and meditating on it and asking God to, you know, show me what can I do, what's the way best for me you know, to put my message out to the world to do my part. And this is all happening during the pandemic, mind you. I'm stuck in the house. Usually before I'm, a, I'm an outsider, I traveled all over. And so I was dealing with depression as well, and mind you, and being in therapy. And so, like I said, turning that negative into a positive and just mm -hmm. asking and, and, and praying and meditating for a, 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 a way that's, you know, impactful. And this is what I came up with. Um, and so... It is my hope with this book, again, it's not meant to, 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 to stare any trouble, but a lot of people will say it is, and that is what it is. I'm, I'm not worried about those people. What I would like for, what is my hope out of this is that when people read this book, whether they like it, good or bad, they share their opinion about it, and then somebody hears that opinion, and then they share theirs, and then the conversation about systemic racism, how to change, gets started. And I'm aware that it may or may not happen within this generation of time, but why not start now? Why not plant the seed for, for the next generation? And so mm -hmm. it, I'm well aware that, you know, this book is not going to change the world overnight. You know, change doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't come, it doesn't happen with just one person complaining. It takes multiple vo voices being heard all at once and people on both ends being willing to be open-minded, open-hearted, and coming together <clears throat> at a round table and talking about those gritty issues that need to be worked out. We can't change the past and what happened, but we can work on now. We can talk about the now so that we can have a better outcome in the future. You know, what say you? I feel like I'm talking too much. So I feel like you should just- No, <laughs> no. We're, Mr. Robert. I told we're you taking I'm gonna it, take over now. <laughs> we're taking it all in. Um, you know, listening to the description of this book, and I think it's going to be helpful, especially in the times that we're living in now, mm -hmm. some of the things that people may think and say is, especially to be honest with you, white people, they may look at it and say, oh, that's for black people. But in reality, it seems like everyone should be reading this book and everyone should be learning about this. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? I I absolutely agree with you. This book is intended for every, uh, again, it's, like I said, it's a mature audience. So if you if you can't take the heat, then don't bother coming to this kitchen. But if you are uh, an adult about the situation and you are willing to understand and accept 
you know, right and wrong, and you know right from wrong, then of course, you know, definitely read this book. And even if you don't read the book, because you can still learn a thing or two. But um, I, I totally agree with your statement, Mr. Mr. Robert, or Robert, if you will. Um, I, this book is meant for everybody, and not just with people in America, all over, you know, the U.S. I've, I've been talking with people in the U.K. right now about this book, too. I want this book to touch lives all over the world. Like I said, my business, Third INT, Manifest, Plan, Prepare, and so we try to practice what we preach over here. And so with this book, I am manifesting that this is the book that will ring the bell of the world. This is the book that will start the change that is needed to talk about and, and figure out ways how can we come together and, and eradicate and, 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 and get rid of finally, not in this time, I know it's not gonna happen <laughs> within this time, but for the next generation or the generation after, this can be the generation that plants the seed. It's too late for the one that's passed, but it's the one that's going on in our time now, people that's living now, young and old, you know, do something. So when you look back on it and you get your grandkids ask you, hey, what did you do during this time? What happened during this time? I want to be able to tell my grandchildren, you know, hey, I wrote this book during the pandemic and, you know, it happened to change the world of pe people's views on systemic racism and how to treat people and how to be open minded and, and, and fair and kind, you know, just because we're all one and the same. We're human, you mm -hmm. know, um, although I bring this book in a gritty manner, that's just the attention grabber. The message of the book is to show compassion be be kind and loving to one another because if, what if the shoe was on the other foot what if this was you mm -hmm. what if this happened to you and your ancestors what if this happened you know to your brother your father your mother you know they go to the store to get something to drink and they never return why because somebody profiled them and they ended up dead and yet yeah. they somehow turned out to be painted a, vic a criminal when they're the victim it was their fault somehow some way it's mm -hmm. their fault and so this book, again, it's, 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 uh, I can't stress this enough. It's intended for mature audience only. I'm getting a lot of reviews, but the negative reviews that I am getting from it, I will say this. I, I'm not worried about that. It, it, it's ringing them, those bells. Those bells are getting wrong. At least, you know, you've seen it. it it'll make them think whether it's negative or bad. And uh, one thing I've learned from uh, our previous one, or y'all's previous one, number 45, he's not mine. I've never acknowledged him as mine and never have. I, the nicest thing I can say about him is number 45. He didn't want to hear what I called him before. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so number 45, what I learned from him, you know, in just this short little amount of time with them being in the office, those little, those little four years, oh God, um, what I've learned from him is that, you know, you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. This man, yeah. at, towards the end of his four years in office, even with causing, you know, a deadly insurrection, refusing to accept defeat, you know, being a sore loser about everything from the beginning to the end, he still had 75 plus million people and probably has gone up even then afterwards. People mm -hmm. supporting and condoning, you know, his BS. Excuse me, I'm trying to keep PG's a thing. I'm sorry about that, but condoning oh, his is. condoning, you know, his, his beliefs, his behavior, mm -hmm. and so that right there shows me no matter what, who you are, what you're doing, what you're saying, and not just with him that I learned that from. I see it every, with other people as well. Not so no matter what you do, what you what you stand for, what you believe in, it's always going to be somebody out there that's that that's going to condone what you're doing, that's going to endorse it. So no matter what the haters or the critics or naysayers got to say about this book, I try to flip it and say that this book is a tool as to be used as an uprising against the white community. No, it's not. That's what they'll say, but this is not. Um, it's meant to ring some bells, make, make, meant to make you uncomfortable, meant to share your true opinion about how you feel about racism, you know, it meant to expose those, those that are still hiding in the dark, if you will. And so I'm, a, I'm not worried about them you know go where you celebrate it not where you tolerate it and so yeah, absolutely <laughs> um you mentioned before speaking things into existence and I'm one of those people I like to speak things into existence yes sir or yes, even... sir. <laughs> don't come so, around me with that negativity I'm a very spiritual person so 
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, let's say um, HBO or Disney or somebody um, comes knocking on your door. They want to make a movie or a mini series out of your life. Who plays you? Who plays me? Me. Mm-hmm. Can't nobody play okay, different. Okay, there you go. Nobody can do different but different. Let me get on it. Get, get, <laughs> let me show you how it's done. <laughs> now, what the real question you should ask me is, is if they come knocking on my door and ask me to turn this book into a script, who do I want? <laughs> That's the real question there. I'm going to um, say you. Me? I don't have a feeling like that. I would, I would want somebody as such as like uh, Tyler Perry, Ava du- du- DuVernay. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the last name. Ava DuVernay, du- du- excuse me. I would want her or, or somebody else to take up the charge of it and turn it into a mini cartoon series. I see this book. I, I'm manifesting this book to be, you know, it's going to take off more than just changing the lives of a million. This is going to be a book that wins the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize, and the Pulitzer Prize. You know, I'm going to win multiple awards for this book. I'm not trying to sound cocky. Like you said, I'm speaking into existence. I'm manifesting this for me and my, my what I believe in, what I, what I want to do in my life. And, and like I said, it's all about once you get your heart and your mind right, you can do whatever it is in life that you feel in your heart that you're meant to achieve. And, and, and I forgot to mention a part of our motto and creed, what we believe for our uh, audience in the pandemic, with the 2020 pandemic, what it taught us is that life is short and tomorrow is not promised. So if anybody out there who feels they are meant to live that good life, that life that you know is better than what they are currently in, then it's time to you know reprogram your mind and, and get that mentality that it's time to get rich during the pandemic or die trying. You know, I always tell mm-hmm. myself or tell people that I know you're either trying to have that come up like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D. There is no in between. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm a, I'm a little philosopher, if you will. I'm a little Sagittarius <laughs> in me. It comes we love out. it. And thank we, you. I appreciate it. it. I give you all you want, all you can handle. <laughs> but yeah, so plan, manifest, prepare for what it is that you want and believe in life. Make sure, you know, you check your mental health. That's, we also, as part of the service side, do motivational speaking. I offer, you know, published and written material, or excuse me, a video material talking on these topics such as mental health and uh, child advocacy and talking about those issues because it's, it's important in society and as well as specifically in the Black community. Um, I also, in the entertainment side, I talk about travel and food expert before the pandemic I was a huge huge traveler I was actually planning on starting my travel blog I've been to about 50 just about 50 countries plus but um like I said it being God's plan it turned into something so much bigger and so I know I only have you know I don't only just sell sell products I sell services as well and um so if anybody out there listening you know go to my website (laughs) I'll get that up in and um you guys can go there and check it out and be motivated, entertained, and inspired all at once and Excellent. educated. Also, you'll learn a lot of things uh, with my travel and food experts for the countries I've been to. Um, and so, yeah. Excellent. What's the one piece of advice you would give to writers who might be listening to this that is having a hard time getting started? Um, just pick up the pen and go. Just mm. pick it up and go. Whatever you feel. Actually, and it's funny how you, how, again, how it all started. Um, I had this little journal and those little black and white compositions like journals, you know, the one I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would, one day I was just doodling. I literally was just doodling words and like manifestations and stuff. And then I just started writing, what if? What if this? And opposed to the dream that I had the day before and the visions I would be having, I started just mapping out those little questions. And before I knew it, Little by little, piece by piece, it turned into a book. And then mm. everything else, it just seemed, you know, to fall into place, just like how it is doing now. And so any writer, young writer, old writer, anybody out there that's starting out, that's, that's been doing it for a while, then y'all should know, man, just keep going. Keep writing. How, how the song go, keep swimming? Just keep writing. Just keep writing. Just keep writing. <laughs> writing. Writing. <laughs> And you you will get there. Finishly, eventually, you will have a, a finished book or finish whatever it is that you're you're trying to achieve. Um, for me, writing is very cathartic. It's 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 my escapism, or it's one of my escapism. Um, I've grown up to have many, but the first one that when I was going through, what I was going through as a child, it was writing. And like I said, my my seventh grade teacher, um, her name was Valerie Sutton. I'll never forget. 
uh, she she was a, a good writer and she's just listening to her stories and her uh, encouraging her me with minds it just it kept it in the back of my mind that I'm going to be a writer one day and, and not even knowing what manifestation was back then I had said it and that I was going to write a book when I grow up and so here it is you know coming to a circle wow um, yeah and so like anybody out there listening you know the power is in the tongue you know speak words of beauty and it will come to you all that negativity even if you feel scared and fearful it's okay you know just don't give any power to it don't feel don't don't feed into it acknowledge it and face it and head on but don't give into it just know that you know you will get through it it'll be okay so I'm going through writer's block too sometime right now I'm <laughs> them, so yeah I, oh definitely I, I still have writer's block you know and and I'm a mm -hmm. first time author after this is my first book mind you and so congratulations uh, thank you thank you and so I, yeah I'm still a little neophyte myself <laughs> and so <laughs> I can't give you too much advice but all I can say is just keep writing man anybody out there listening that has any aspirations or goals or dreams to be a writer or uh, a number one, have a number one bestseller, keep writing. That's the only way you can get there is just keep writing. For the readers and writers who are listening to this, they, they've heard about what if they're ready to buy mm -hmm. or they're ready to um, purchase your services or um, the things that you have to offer. Where's mm -hmm. the best place where they can go for that? So with that, we are having our pre-sale um, for the book starting what's this today is the 13th excuse me i'm sorry yep. so we, friday uh, 13th friday i know right <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch that movie today <laughs> um so i want to say around the 25th 27th so that that week the last week of august is when the pre-sale will start um you can go to my website www.differenceworld.net spelled d-i-f-e-r-n-t-s w-o-r-l-d dot net also i must note in association with the book we will be selling products on our website only such as apparels merchandise um, small items these include hats shirts sweaters backpacks coffee mugs what else we got a lot of keychains bookmarks go on the website and you'll see um, <laughs> however i must disclose to you those won't be available during the pre-sales those will be available sometime the second week of september and so right now we'll be selling um we'll have a pre-sale starting next week uh, if you guys are out there listening you know go to our website and we'll have all the information posted on the prices and everything um it's going to run for about two to three weeks uh, and afterwards, uh, we'll get everything shipped out. Also, I must uh, fully disclose, uh, I did receive a notification from, from the shipping um, due to like the COVID restrictions. Uh, there may be uh, a delay even with ordering the books. So I just want to fully disclose that. I, I like to be a, a person that's upfront. I don't like uh, holding anything back. I know some people out there will be appreciative of that. So just letting you guys know upfront, you, you will get your books, of course, but just depending on how how their shipment operates with the COVID, they that's not on me; it's on them. <laughs> so it's not my yeah, it's, it's with everything. Yeah, it's with everything. Yeah, so I'm just letting you guys know it's not me. You get your book; it's, it's just the <laughs> shipping department. It's their their COVID restriction rules that they have to follow. So, um, yeah, we'll also be having a book launch um, for our book in uh, September. Um, we are also looking to do a book tour starting next uh, spring of 2022 with the book. Um, so stay tuned for that. Again, just go to our website. We have all our social media info there for you guys as well. Um, I want to also take this time to give a shout out to the illustrator of the book, Anastasia Arnold. She, uh, I like to say, God blessed her with the hands of gold. Uh, she understood the assignment and executed it effortlessly. So any of you writers out there, once you get done with your book, if you need an illustrator, whether it be adult illustrations or children illustrations, she's your girl to go to. So talk to her. Uh, her information is on my website as well. Um, 
I want to give a shout out to my family, my nephew, uh, Seon, who was a part of the book as well. He's actually on the front cover. And if you guys uh, listen to the book trailer, that's his voice. If you hear the little boy's voice, that's his. And he's in the book as well. Um, so he's getting him some clout too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, who else? And yeah, everybody else out there that's just a part of the project and everybody out there listening and that want to know about, more about different and who I am, you know, come to different world and learn, you know, what my third eye sees. And so, you know, go to my website. Uh, we're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Clubhouse, TikTok, you name it. Um, all our information, again, is on our website. So just go there, differenceworld.net. Um, I think what else? I think that's all. Yeah, just want to take time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Robert. Thank you guys out there for listening. And I truly appreciate this opportunity and time to, to talk with you and your audience. And thank you so much for having me. And I hope to receive an invite from you again in the future. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're always welcome here. And what we're going to do, um, like we do for all of our guests, we're going to have your direct link off of my page. So okay. if you're listening to this, um, you can go ahead and pause it. Um, go to my webpage, morewriting.com with two O's. Um, click on links, and then you will see difference in the list at the top of the list. Um, go ahead and um, click on difference, and then it'll take you to the webpage where you can watch the book trailer. You can pre-order your book. If you're listening yeah. to this in September, you can buy your merch and stay warm in the fall. Um, where I am, it gets kind of chilly, so you might need a, a, a shirt or a jacket or something. So or coffee mug to drink some apple cider. So uh, that link will be there for everybody. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Robin. I truly appreciate you again for having me. And anybody out there listening again, just remember, you know, in order for you to succeed and guarantee success in life, you must manifest and speak into existence what it is that you want and then plan for what it is that you want and then prepare for what it is that you are about to receive. So manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and it will come to you. And, and forget, you know, have that hustle and mentality that you're trying to get rich during the pandemic or die trying. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So different thank you once again, and that's going to be another edition of the International Writers Association podcast. As I said before, you want to be a member of our group, you want to know more about our writers, you can go to www.internationalwritersassociation.com. You can email me at robert at morewriting.com and I'm across different social media um, platforms, more writing. So thank you everybody and we will see you next week. Hey everybody, I'm back. It's your girl different. Uh, that concludes our audio interview with Mr. Robert J. Moore of the International Writers Association podcast. I hope you guys all enjoy. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you comment and don't forget to share the video. Uh, the book again, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, will be available for pre-sale the last week of August. Be sure to go to our website, www.differenceworld.net should be in our tagline at the end uh, as well as um, I'm going to also uh, hit the website that you guys if you would like to uh, hit up Mr. Robert J. Moore um, for any information and what he does his information is available below in our tagline as well uh, don't forget everybody um, manifest plan and prepare for the things that you want in life and it will come to you difference will come and learn peace <laughs>